I think we'll get started. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for attending the Vermont 2020 general election audit. As most of you probably know and are aware, we had to postpone this from December when it was previously scheduled because of COVID. Um, and part of it was that we were having the surge, but so was the Boston and Massachusetts area. So we, cons uh, we consulted with uh, Dr. Levine at the Department of Health and the decision was made to postpone it. Despite the challenges posed to our election process in 2020, Vermonters rose to the occasion, voting in record shattering numbers during a global pandemic. Our decision to mail a ballot to every active registered voter resulted in new records, both for early voting and for total turnout. Vermonters were able to vote safely and securely without needing to decide between putting their health at risk, the health of their communities at risk, or exercising their constitutional right to vote. The audit of the 2020 general election results will be, we will be performing today is a best practice and has been required by state statute since 2006. The purpose of today is to verify the accuracy of the official results reported in November. It is an important administrative process which serves to build trust in the integrity and security of the Vermont elections process. We conduct the audit transparently open to all members of the public who wish to attend, whether in person or virtually. Thanks to Orca Media, this audit will be live streamed, allowing us to make the process even more transparent for those who cannot attend in person, but who do, do wish to watch from home today or at a later date. Audits are again are a best practice utilized across the country following the general election, while the specific process by which an audit is performed may vary from state to state. There are several characteristics which, are, which all reputable audits will share. One, transparency, which I've just mentioned. Two, independence. We are proud to pr uh, partner with our trusted vendor, Clear Ballot, to conduct this audit. Clear Ballot has a national reputation for excellence and years of experience, including conducting our previous two audits in 2016 and 2018. The equipment being used today is completely different uh, from, from the work from the, uh, and independent from the equipment that we used in the 2020 general election. These are not the same scanners, they're not the same systems. And that's an important aspect for auditing any system. Third is security. By law, every ballot cast in the 2020 general election must be sealed in secure ballot bags and stored by the town and city clerks in Vermont in their vaults for 22 months. This is a federal mandate. The bags are sealed with tamper-proof tags and there is a chain of custody in getting them to the polling place today. We can authorize the clerks to open a ballot bag if, one, the, they sealed the original entrance checklist in the bag by mistake, or two, they sealed the tabulator memory card into the bag. Or three, an, SS, an SOS authorized audit such as this. And for any other reason, it would require a court order. Recounts are, off, are overseen by the courts so that opening bags for a recount is done by court order. Fourth, we have statistical confidence. The method by which we conduct this audit produces a very high degree of statistical confidence in the results. We will be verifying today the results for every ballot in every race in all seven towns. Prior to 2000, I think it was 12 or 14, we only did two races, a federal race and a state race. Uh, and, and those were the only two races that we did. We now do every race, every ballot in the towns that have been randomly selected. Our random selections this time around are Brandon, Pownall, Randolph, Topsom, Warren, Worcester, and South Burlington's Chittenden 7-4 district. The ballot bags are, are delivered either directly here, there are two towns that brought them today right here to this location, 
uh, or they are delivered to our, the custody of our office and our elections team took control of them. Today, one at a time, and I stress one at a time, we will break the seals and open those ballot bags and using the distinctly different tabulators that we have here today, conduct a full count of every ballot cast, which shall be inclusive of every race on that ballot. We will then compare the audit results to those certified election results, and we have copies of those over here reported to us by the town clerks in November. In the years since we started doing this, we have never seen any significant abnormalities between the audited results and the official results. In fact, in most cases, we find that the tabulator town counts are more accurate than hand count. And that's not a knock on hand count, it's just the truth. Of course, if anything is unusual is found, that would trigger the need to investigate and determine the cause. And that would be done, if we've received anything like that, we would take the initial look at it, but turn it over to the Attorney General's office. We never expect that to be the case, but it's important to understand that state law does govern the steps to be taken if there are significant unexplainable discrepancies. We will have a chance to review the results of the audit in real time on the screen above as we move between towns. Once the audit is complete, the ballots will be resealed in the ballot bags and, and returned under as, as per the statutory retention requirements and returned to the towns. Before we begin, I want to quickly introduce our Vermont Secretary of State election staff and our independent auditing team. So we have Chris Winters, my Deputy Secretary of State. Um, Will Senning, the Vermont's Director of Elections, standing up there. Uh, Lori, uh, our fearless team of election administrators, Lori Bjornlund, uh, who organized much of these proceedings for today. JP Isabel and Lilani Oatway, right over here. Um, I have to say, I want to give a little bit of a shout out to my elections team. We have the smallest election team in the country with five people. They are truly our election rock stars. We also uh, count as part of our fortunate of our team is our town clerks and city clerks from around the state of Vermont. We could not do an election process without those town clerks and city clerks. They are really the backbone of our election system. And lastly, my chief of staff, Eric Covey. Everybody worked round the clock during the 2020 election cycle so that Vermont voters could vote safely and securely. And that starts with the town clerks, their boards of civil authority, right on up through to our team here. From, from Clear Ballot, we have Keir Holman, who's Vice President of Technical Services, James Rundlet, National Sales Manager, uh, Jay Ballenbacher, Audit Program Manager, Ira Margulis, where's the Regional Account Manager, and Dylan Sleeth, the Field Support Technician. He's hiding behind his laptop over there. <laughs> I also want to extend a huge thank you again to Orca Media for being here today and for helping our, uh, assist our mission to deliver government transparency to the people of Vermont. It is only through this open and transparent process that we can continue to build the public's faith in the integrity of our election system and its institutions. The 2020 election was the most divisive election I have ever experienced in my lifetime. And before you give me a hard time about my age, I'm not that old, but I am old enough to have experienced a fair number of elections. This was also the most secure, most heavily scrutinized uh, election in recent Vermont, in recent U.S. history, if not ever. And that goes across this country. Election officials work tirelessly under a microscope in the midst of a pandemic to do what is a very difficult job in a normal year. We consider it a great year if there's no news. So, other than the results. 
However, some individuals with personal or political agendas continue to use misinformation, disinformation, and unfounded conspiracy theories to erode public confidence in the 2020 elections. The right to vote is the very foundation of our democracy. When it comes to elections, the truth matters. All we can do as election officials is respond with facts and evidence. Post-election audits are one important way, one important tool that states can respond to for these unfounded allegations by openly, transparently, independently, and securely affirming the accuracy and integrity of our election results. So it's time to get started. Here? Did you want to add a few things? I will, very briefly. As uh, Secretary Condos mentioned, my name is Keir Holman. I'm the Vice President of Technical Services with the Clear Ballot Group. Uh, first and foremost, I want to I thank Secretary Condos and his staff uh, for, for what we see as a real partnership. Uh, our company got started uh, by being able to audit other systems' uh, election ballots. And it's really, uh, really an important tradition that we carry on. Uh, we've gotten into a lot of other uh, aspects of, of elections around the country, but we still consider audit where we started and an important part of what we do. So, so thank you, Secretary Condos and, and your staff. You are great to work with, and we certainly see you as a partner. Uh, on a personal note, this, I believe, is our third audit here in, in the state of Vermont, and I have yet to witness one. So I was excited to get here and, and personally very grateful uh, to be able to be here. Um, from a technology standpoint, as Secretary Condos mentioned, in the world of audits, it's important to be independent. Um, you know, we don't, uh, election systems don't audit themselves, and that's really where, where we started our business. Uh, as Secretary Condos mentioned, we don't typically find uh, major counting issues, but what we do find it, it gives our clients some insights into their own process, uh, maybe helps them think of things they might want to do in the future, and really gives the public a level of confidence in their election that they voted in and that they entrusted their public officials with. And, and again, we are grateful to be a part of that. From a technology standpoint today, we will be scanning all of the ballots from the, from the municipalities that the Secretary mentioned. We'll do those one municipality at a time. Our scanners will scan several thousand ballots an hour between them. So uh, with that kind of throughput, we should be able to finish today without an issue. Uh, we'll be displaying results up on the screen uh, that I believe are going to be live streamed as well. Um, and we will be available for any questions that anybody might have about our system. We certainly look forward to answering those. And again, very grateful to be here. And, and I speak for uh, the, the entire clear ballot uh, team that is here. It was interesting to know uh, Secretary Condos has the smallest election staff in the country. That, that, is, that is great, because I don't care how big a state is, uh, administering elections is a big job, an important job, and uh, I know they do a great job here, and we're happy to be a part of it. So thank you again for allowing us to be here, and uh, we'll get started. Go to it. Good morning, everybody. Can folks hear me even if I leave my mask on for now? I think I'm going to, and, and let me know. Um, my name's Will Senning. I'm the Director of Elections for the state of Vermont. While I'm talking here, my team is going to start uh, moving forward with the audit. The first town that we are going to audit is the town of Worcester. That's Worcester, for those of you out of state looking at the <laughs> spelling on the screen. Actually, the folks from Mass should know that plenty well themselves. Um, let me see, there are 803 registered voters on the checklist for Worcester, um, and there were 632 ballots counted at the general election. What you're going to see, for those of you watching on the live stream, stream the three, uh, three elections division staff are going to open the ballot bag for the town of Worcester and uh, remove the voted ballots. There are some other materials that are required to be sealed in the bag, so you may see the team um, removing and setting aside those other materials. There should be a ballot of defective ballots, an envelope of defective ballots, 
and an envelope of replaced ballots if there were any of those in the town of Worcester, copies of the entrance checklist. By rule, under the audit rules for the state of Vermont, only staff from the elections division or their designees can handle the ballots. So primarily it will be my staff handling the ballots. Um, if we do need to designate anyone, we may designate a clear ballot team member or two. You're gonna see the team um, put the ballots in manageable stacks for the scanners. And um, as soon as they're ready, the scanners will start scanning them. You'll see at a pretty high rate. And as Kier mentioned, we're gonna display the results on the screen above, and you'll be able to see those results being tallied over time. All the ballots in Vermont are printed on the same tabulator readable card stock, regardless of whether those towns hand count their ballots or not. Worcester does use a tabulator. And a couple things now to note, the elections division team keeps the ballots in the same order that they're fed through the scanners as they're coming off the scanners, which would enable us if we needed to, to go back and look at a certain ballot. Um, we'll be able to see the images of the ballots when the process is complete, but that would also let us go back and isolate that actual individual paper ballot and compare it to the image we're seeing. Uh, they do do the ballots in batches so that if there were any um, jam or need to go back, we don't have to go back and do the entire town, but you can go back and just start at the most recent batch that you've done. Are you doing 50 or 100 in a batch? I'm just grabbing. Just a, a good chunk. That was a, a process that we instituted after the first year so that you didn't have to go back and do the entire town again. You could go back to one of the break points. Um, We'll show this, uh, vote visualization real quick. Sure. Just oh, right to now? see what we have, uh, some of that. While we wait. Sure. So, as there are, do you want me to kind of explain what sure. that? Sure. Um, so this is actually what we call our vote visualization. So some of the ballots that we scanned, this top portion up here is actually, um, we, we have the 100 ovals that of least confidence, meaning they're not filled in as much as the other ovals. So starting at the ver bottom, very bottom right, that is the least confident vote. But it's still registered as a vote because it meets the threshold um, of the system. And if we scroll down a little bit more, Ira, and then we'll, we'll bring up any overvotes that we find um, that can be visually inspected. Uh, maybe the voter did make a mistake. Um, so we could uh, adjudicate that if need be. And then um, any ballots that were non-votes and then any, maybe any marginal or questionable marks. So that's a little bit of what the vote visualization is. So you kind of get a, an idea of what your voters do. Can you point out that if you click on more of those squares? Yeah, sure. So, um, oh, can you back up real quick, Ira? Went a little fast for me. So if I hover over any one of these ovals, uh, just any one, it actually gives you a clipped uh, image of that contest. But if I were to go ahead and, and clicks on the oval, it's gonna bring up the entire ballot so it can be inspected. And this is front and back. And then on the left-hand side, we show um, how the ballot was actually counted or what we counted for the ballot. That's a nice clean ballot. 
Yeah, that, that is a very good ballot for a voter. Um, and, and we see all different types of there. And as Kier mentioned before about, um, about process for your voters, um, sometimes um, what the elections administrators will do is use this as a tool to better educate the voters. Um, you know, this, this is why it's important to fully fill in the oval. Um, so, okay. to refresh the screen um, everything is being processed in real time so as they're scanning ballots we can actually go in and, and look at additional um, of ovals and things like that if, if need be So for this audit, um, the scanners that you see being used are actually off-the-shelf scanners. They're commercially available. It's just the software uh, behind it that, that the when, once it scans, the data is, is put into the system. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that as well. So we're going, to, we're going to check out the results here that we just got for the town of Worcester. Um, as an initial matter, we counted 632 ballots, which was the same number of ballots counted on the Worcester official return of votes. I have the official return of votes for the town of Worcester here. We have hard copies available for anybody who's here listening. And there are also public documents that are available online and we'll make all these results available online we'll make a nice spreadsheet that compares election night to the audit for now i'm resigned to um reading through the totals from the over from the official return of vote here that i have in front of me and like i said again we had 632 ballots counted on election night and we had 632 ballots counted today which is great and is a testament to the election workers in Worcester for nicely, cleanly packing and organizing their ballot bag. Um, in the race for president and vice president, can you go back to the PDF? These are the audit results you're seeing on the screen right now. And I'm gonna read the results from the official return of vote and we'll compare the two. Uh, for the purpose of this presidential race, I am just gonna read the names of the people who got votes. Um, because there are so many there with zeros. Actually, I'm gonna stick with the top two. I'll go through all of them, that's all right. Joe Biden, I don't have the um, vice presidential candidates on the official return of vote, so I'm just gonna read the presidential candidates. For Joe Biden, we had 464. Howie Hawkins had five. Joe Jorgensen had five. Allison Kennedy had one. Christopher LaFontaine had three. Gloria Lariva won. Keith McCormick won. H. Brooke Page, six. Donald J. Trump, 125. Kanye West, three. Ten write in votes. No over votes. Eight blank votes for a total of 632. I believe that was a total match, wasn't it? Yeah. I only have one set of eyes. In the Rep to Congress race, uh, Peter Becker had seven votes, Miriam Berry won 117, Christopher Hawali 11, Marsha Horn 10, Sean Orr 2, Jerry Trudell 6, Peter Welch 457, total write in votes of three, and 19 blanks. Is that a match also, I think? In governor's race, again, just the candidates with votes. Charlie Dickerson, two. I'll read them all. Wayne Billadu, zero. Michael DeVos, zero. Charlie Dickerson, two. Kevin Hoyt, six. Emily Payton, 
two, Phil Scott, 362, Aaron Hazlitt Whitney, one, David Zuckerman, 239, nine right in, zero over, and 11 blank. Excellent. You'd think these tabulators were made to count votes. Wayne Billadu, five. Ralph Corbo, this is Lieutenant Governor, three. Chris Erickson, 19. Molly Gray, 385. Scott Milne, 196. Nine write in votes. No over votes, 15 blanks. So there was, there was a. Molly Gray, there's. So we have 385 on the ORV, you guys had 386. Scott Mill, we have 196 for Scott here and 195. We can investigate that. Yeah. Yep. You probably want to keep going for now. I'll keep going for now. We'll, yeah. we'll come back and take a look at that. Was that Lieutenant Governor? Yep. State Treasurer. Carolyn Whitney Brannigan had 119. Chris Erickson had 30. Beth Pierce had 429. Alex Wright had 22, two write-ins, no overvotes, 30 blank. Extra write-in on the... Somebody note that one too. Again, I'll say at this point, having had two in a row here, it's not uncommon for us to see shifts of one or two votes um, between candidates or between the blank column and candidates. And we'll see, we usually can, can figure out what's going on when we go back and take a look. Secretary of State, Jim Condos, 429. Chris Erickson, 24. H. Brooke Page, 123. Pamela Smith, 27. Zero right in, zero over, 29 blank. For auditor, Chris Erickson at 85. Doug Hoffer had 468. There was one write in. And this is what I noticed uh, before I made the announcement and was talking about over here before reading these votes. It appears that the um, clerk in Worcester mistakenly recorded her blank votes in the overvote column. She had 78 overvotes indicated and no blank votes. Um, for a total of 632. For Attorney General T.J. Donovan at 457, Chris Erickson 36, H. Brooke Page 99, no write-ins, one over vote, 39 blank votes. Very common, thanks, Lori. Where was I, state senator? Yeah. Ken Alger, 140, Ann Cummings, 397. Andrew Perchlick, 358. Anthony Polina, 396. Don Marie Tomasi, 149. Dwayne Tucker, 136. Paul Valorand, 37. Three write-ins, no overvotes, 280 blank votes. And for state rep, Shannara Johnson, 132, Tyler Machia, 125, Avram Pat, 437, David Yacovone, 439, total write-ins, three, one overvote, 127 blank votes. And last but not least, Ty Bailiff. We have Mark Poulin with 190, Asa Skinder with 360. No write ins, no overvotes, 82 blank votes. Okay. Oh, we're not going to do JPs today. We don't have the official returns of vote for the JPs, so there's nothing to compare them to. So the ones we were taking a look at, can somebody help remind me? Okay. Right, so if you look at this bottom right-hand corner, there's an X that probably wasn't registered by your 
system and or something like that, because we have a lower threshold for yep. those circles. So we can adjudicate this to, to match your system if, if you'd like us to do that. Well, it was off. It was going to have Milne. It also had a shift for him, right? Can we right, open that it did. Ballot up? Open that yeah, ballot can up. Open too. that ballot. So you can see on this ballot, that's how the person voted was by X's, uh, which is the the Optus scan that we use doesn't necessarily pick that up. And that would have had to have been looked at physically by by a board of civil authority me member. Which is done. They review the ballots after they're run through the tabulator for markings like these that might show voter intent but might not necessarily have been picked up by the tabulator. Um, they, it's hard to tell what they decided on that night. They may have decided that those votes were being read when they, when they weren't. Can we look at the Scott Millen as well? Yeah. And his, his was the other way. Mm -hmm. We had 196. though it was one was more and one was less yes you yep. guys I'm, I'm wondering if um, Molly's the vote we looked at on Molly's on the Molly Gray vote yeah. actually got picked up and what we might be seeing here is a transposition on the ORV it could be yeah giving one to the other and one to the other a Molly Gray vote just mistakenly put in the Scott Milne column happy with one vote discrepancies <laughs> around here. Yeah, um, Quick so we can move on to South Burlington. As these guys said again from a voter education perspective, it it's, the it's the same ballot in both yeah. races that was that least confident mark. And you can see it's kind of an outlier among the Worcester ballots. And it's why it's so important to fill in the ovals completely. So um, the question is, do we want to leave the results as is in here? As the, yeah. yeah. I say we go. Yep. Again, I'll reiterate that we'll be posting the full um, results with any deltas between election night and the audit on our website as soon as possible. This. James, do people use this? And So you can free The, uh, the first bag that the team opened from South Burlington turned out to contain the defective ballots from South Burlington. So they're not included in the count on election night, and so they're not 
uh, scanned as part of the audit, of course. And so they had to replace the seal on that defective ballot bag and move into the voted ballots. So in South Burlington, they have a significant number of overseas and military voters. Those voters return their ballots typically on um, non-cardstock paper. They're ballots that they've printed out in the location where they are and then hand marked them and mailed them back. Those ballots are transferred, the votes on those ballots are transferred onto a tabulator readable ballot. No, you can commence. Um, on election day by two election officials in South Burlington so that the ballots, instead of hand counting the flimsy regular paper ballots that come back, that allows uh, the clerk in South Burlington to run those ballots through the tabulator. She just explained to me she does that last, which makes sense, so they clear out the ballot bin from underneath the tabulator and run through just the ballots that have been transferred on the tabulator readable ballots. That allows her to then take those out of the box underneath the tabulator and attach them back to the ballot that was sent back from the voter to show that they were accurately transferred by the election officials. And so she stores them separately in the replaced ballot envelope with the original ballot attached to the tabulator readable ballot that the election officials filled out. And so in order to audit those same ballots that were read by the tabulator, we are detaching the tabulator readable ballot from the original that was returned from the voter so that we can send them through the square scanners. We had to redo the first batch of ballots that we did for South Burlington that were uh, scanned before the tolerance on the scanner had been changed. And so it allowed for a few to be double fed that uh, to go through without being read. So we picked up some more there that uh, um, have gotten us closer to the number we were looking for. And then we are going to redo the last batch that we did because it looked like um, they had picked up an additional count. It was 53. So after we scan this small batch of 52, we should be ready to go. So Jim, you can help us here. There were four ballots in this batch of South Burlington ballots that were unreadable by the um, clear ballot system. And I'm now remembering we have done this a few times before with the system. I couldn't remember. But so we're going to go through now uh, collectively as a group and adjudicate these ballots to add them to the totals. No, no, these, these, the count is okay. These weren't readable, so they weren't tabulated by the clear ballot system for some reason. And James was giving me a few examples of why that happens sometimes. Um, ballot status. Do you want me to just call these out as I do them? So this yeah. This first one's going to be a vote for Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Next one we'll do a vote for Peter, Peter Welch. Welch. Phil Scott. Molly Gray, anybody stop us if they disagree? Blank. 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 Keisha Rahm.
Nope. Nope. Keisha. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yep. And don't worry about the JPs. Time now it's here. It looks like uh, the width of the ballot may have been short, so that it's uh, wasn't picking up these timing marks here. Space between the timing marks and the edge of the paper. Excuse me. Oh, uh, I actually read the first page fine. It's only looking for the results of the second page. So Townsend. Meta. Daniel. Timing marks. Again, space between the timing marks and the edge of the paper. So we have Joe Biden, Peter Welch, Phil Scott, Molly Gray, Beth Pierce, Jim Condos. Who's that guy? Doug Hoffer, T.J. Donovan, now Baruth, Chittenden, Ellers, Wong, Rom, Soraka. Yeah. That's probably why you didn't read it. What's the top of the ballot say? Yeah. So this is the wrong ballot. That's the wrong ballot. Yeah. Um, which also explains why we have one more ballot, right? Yep. Yes. So however you can say oh, that to no. a non ballot is yeah. <laughs> No, because the tabulator read that ballot for all the other races. Her no, it depends on how she has her tabulator card set up. But her count was the same on the right, but we have one more ballot tape. Then we should for doing running these through the scanner. So the tabulator would not have read this, Correct. and we would have done the transfer on it. So it was probably one of the ones that the transfer they got put in the wrong pile. And so we probably got it. Folded corner meant that couldn't read the top. Should we? Kai, I could start going through these. Should I start going through? Yeah, I can scroll. We'll probably need to check this stuff out because there's some variations sure. here. Anything you want to look at? Mm -hmm. Jim, I'm going to go through these <coughs> and South Burlington. There's some stuff to look at. So we're going to take a look at the results from South Burlington while the elections team is packing up those bags. Now I'm going to start with the race for president. You can see the results from the audit up on the screen. And I'll read the results from the official return of vote on election night. Biden had 2,093. Uh, Carroll had three, Brian Carroll. Richard Duncan had two.
Howie Hawkins, 9. Joe Jorgensen, 23. Allison Kennedy, 1. Kyle Kapipke, 1. Christopher LaFontaine, 7. H. Brick Page, 2. Brock Pierce, 2. Jerome Siegel, 1. Gary Swing, 2. Donald J. Trump, 6, 17. Kanye West, 14. And total write ins of 11. Uh, one overvote and 33 blank. So the only real changes were the Trump and the write in. Trump, the write in, and the blank, right. which I think should begin to make sense if we start looking at them. You had four more for Trump. Likely those bottom four were not read yeah, by the tabulator. Yep. Hey, Ira, can you click on one of those? Yeah, it doesn't matter which one. Just... The interesting thing about our system is the way our system works, it takes into account the way the whole bar ballot is marked. So that's why we can end up picking up some ballots that maybe weren't picked up by another system because our, our system is smart enough to say, okay, they seem to have marked the whole ballot the same this way. Is, this is how we'll they mark it. Yep. So take a quick look for me, Kai, at the, um, what was the blank number? Your undervote. And we have 33, so there's four of those, four of those right there. Um, can you take a quick look at the right ends? Yep. South Burlington only had 11, which is likely because of some that are written in that weren't picked up. Their total writing count was 11. Uh, so they probably got rid of like anything that said felon or something like that. And moved to blank. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Can you look at all the write ins? Is that all of them? That should be all of them, yeah. So none of the above one, none of them. Do they take out? No, shouldn't. Fictitious. Three, six, nine, twelve. Three, seventeen. Yep. Let's keep moving. No. Let's see if we can get a pattern. Rep to Congress. Peter Becker, 38, Miriam Berry, 554, Christopher Halali, 27, Marsha Horn, 23, Sean Orr, 7, Jerry Trudell, 32, Peter Welch, 2018, total write-ins of three, one overvote, 119 blank. We had 2018, you had 2019. Right, so that's probably, again, the same checkmark ballot. The checkmark ballot. Or the one next to it, which is very, very mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it could have been that as well. Uh, and, uh, Sorry, Sean Orr, 32. Peter Welch, 2018. No, but Barry is, yeah. Barry had oh, one additional. In in Barry though, not Miriam Barry, not Hawali. Oh, okay. I was looking at the So Barry is supposed to be five fifty four or five fifty six? Five fifty four. Check the so right end. Probably that check mark ballot once again. Yes. Yeah. Right. Just take a peek at the right ends in that one for me. Yep. 
Exactly. So that's why these guys had two more write-ins. Let me look at the blanks. Yep, and both of those were moved into blank for our ORV. So we can keep going. Uh, Governor, Governor, Billadu 12, DeVos 8, Dickerson 3, Hoyt 14, Peyton 17, Phil Scott 1803, Whitney 9, Zuckerman 871, 7 right in, 0 over, 78 blank. at least two of them there. Yep. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Billadu 30, Corbo 34, Erickson 75, Gray 1561, Milne 991, uh, six right and zero over 125 blank. Should go to Molly. Yeah. That might not be why, though, too. Yeah, I don't see any Molly. Okay. If you look at her race, yeah, it's those, those same two ballots again, probably went to blank. Yep. Yep. You want to look at that whole ballot? Sure. Yeah, that one, that particular race. Marking light the whole the way, and it looks like your counters actually got it for Molly. Yeah, we, we missed it. So I was talking to Donna, her counters, yeah. right. Treasurer, Brannigan 661, Erickson 97, Pierce 1646, Wright 180, total write-ins of one, no overvotes, 237 blank. Secretary of State, Condos 1873, Erickson 77, Page 529, Smith 143. No write ins, no overvotes, 200 blank. You had two more H. Brooks than us. Down to one again. Uh, auditor of accounts, Chris Erickson, 329. Doug Hoffer, 2033. Seven right in, zero over vote, 453 blanks. It was four off. What were we on, auditor? Try the red ends. Just curious. Blank, no vote. 
That's three. Got this yeah. down to three. Uh, Attorney General. ORV TJ Donovan 2069, Erickson 91, page 481, 11 write ins, 0 over 170 blanks. Too fewer for TJ. No, we'll be up to so state senate Baruth twelve seventy six Bowen seven oh five just Chastity six seventy Chittenden seventeen thirty one Ellers four eighteen Hollingsworth five oh one Long five fifty nine Lyons fourteen fifty three Pearson nine oh one Rom thirteen thirty eight Reddick 598, Roland 538, Sorotkin 1482, 7 right in, 4 over vote, 4,751 blank. You're generally t two fewer. Yeah. So it's those two ballots again. Yep. They're all within one or two. Yeah. Can you look at the blanks? Um, those counts are really close. Yeah. Uh, state Rep Townsend 2292. 27 write ins, 503 blanks. We have more votes than we can see. It's, again, it's going to be these check mark ballots here. Yeah. Um, Maybe the dot. And she's got five more blanks, exactly. It's again difficult with the six. Oh, that's not the six. That's just state rep. Hi, Bailiff. Gamlin at 2115. 12 write in, no overvote, 695 blank. Yep. Papa Bowie. <laughs> So it would look like a it look like a couple lightly marked or uniquely marked ballots, throwing those off by a little bit, and then um, instances where um, there was either no name or a fictitious name put in the write-in spaces, are accounting for most of those differences. Overall, good job, South Burlington. <clears throat>
and you guys already packaged that up, right? Yep. So other than lunch, we can move on to the next town. I'd like to keep going. Six fifty six. Yep. Way to go, Thompson. Go through tops them, tops them. <laughs> right. Okay, well, you're uh, completed scanning the ballots from tops them. And um, ballot count matched 656 ballots counted on election night and 656 audited today. And so I'll start with the um, Race for president. Biden had 273. I'm reading from the official return of vote filed by the clerks. Biden had 273. Carroll, two. Hawkins, two. Jorgensen, four. LaFontaine, two. Lariva, one. McCormick, one. Page, two. Trump, 356. West one, two right ins, no over, ten blank. Pretty pretty close on all of those, huh? You counted one less Biden. We had two seventy three. Most likely a light mark. Yes, check the right ones there. So if there's not any um, of the kind of typically obvious reasons, mm -hmm. transfers, I want to note and remind everybody that Topsom is a hand count town. So we're not dealing with tabulators here and um, one or two vote differences could be the result of uh, human error in adding up the totals from the summary sheets, tally sheets to the summary sheets. The differences from Trump here look pretty obvious. A couple of, uh, May not have been counted. Yeah, the a bit there. Yep. But again, it's not a machine. Yeah. So you're talking about human analysis, and those might not have been counted. Or actually, so we were three above on Trump. Yours wouldn't have counted those. You're right, and those hand counters probably would have. Yep. Let's go rep to Congress. Becker, 10. Barry, 280. Halali, 8. Horn, 14. Orr, 1. Tradell, 3. Welch 317, no write ins, 23 blank. And the hand 
كان عمرك كان عدد هذا؟ Governor, we got Billadu two, DeVos four, Dickerson seven, Hoyt seventeen, Peyton three, Scott four ninety four, Whitney three, Zuckerman one hundred five, three right ends, eighteen blanks. Spot on for the counters and the tops of them. Lieutenant Governor, uh, Billadu seven, Corbo one, Erickson seven, Gray two thirty eight, Milne three eighty two, three right in, eighteen blank. Same one. Again, I'm not going to overanalyze these with the hand count. Uh, where was I? Secretary of State? Treasurer. Treasurer. Brannigan, 306. Erickson, 20. Pierce, 268. Wright, 15. No right ins, 47 blank. Yeah, because you had what, 18? Uh, look at the blanks. But we counted more than that, right? 18, 18 to 15, yep. Yep, yep. Uh, Secretary of State. Condos 271, Erickson 13, Page 300, Smith 32, no right in 40 blank. Look at auditor. Yep. Uh, Erickson eighty six, Hoffer four sixty seven, four right ends, no overvote ninety nine, blanks. One more for Hoffer. Attorney General, Donovan 320, Erickson 27, Page 272, no write ins, no overvotes, 37 blank. Yeah. State Senator, Benning 297, Choate 178. 
JT Dodge 88, Kitchell 242, Wilson 216, one right in, no overroads, 290 blanks. No. Kind of two more. And what about um, look at Benning? You counted one less for Benning. We had two ninety seven. One of those. Uh, there is a mark on this one. Yep. They may have counted that. Can you look at that ballot? Sure. Uh, yeah, they pretty consistently filled in the ovals, so if it was a little mark like that, our system would skip over it. But, but well, they might have. From Charles Wilson, but that's a two. That's it's a two. two. Oh, I see. Yeah. So they may have counted Counters that. Counters gave that to them. Uh, state rep. Parsons, 393. Root Winchester, 231. Uh, 32 blanks. Two over what they had. Yeah, I mean, that's, this one is uh, pretty close on there. It's a check mark. And then we were two under for root. Uh, not seeing much of my stuff. No, but that was that big, that's that ballot where they were crossing out whole boxes. Oh. Hey, go ahead and sort IRA in case all of them aren't there. Yeah, I did. It's, oh, okay. Uh, look pretty clean. And that's a, you know, that's a two free, two different on each candidate, the different directions yeah. could be um, reporting. <laughs> and finally, high bail of 544 for con toys. Eight right in. 104 blank. And yeah, there you go. Check mark there. Mm -hmm. And you counted that as an overvote. The hand canvassers probably did not since they crossed yep. it out. Yeah. That's where you get that one overvote. Yep. For the record, good job, Topsham hand counters in general. Pretty right on. <laughs> Topsham. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> each of the ender cards for each town the ender card is what tells the machine that you're done running the ballots through and they can um, tabulate the totals it can only be used once and so we destroy those uh, as we go along. That's what you saw one of the election staff crumpling up. Um, or ripping. Or ripping. It's so that we don't mistakenly use that same ender card twice. Just like we found in South Burlington, there's a number of ballots in the bag for Brandon that were um, printed and sent back probably from voters overseas and or voters with disabilities voting from home using the ballot marking system. And so they are each clearly marked by the clerk and another election official as having been transferred to a tabulator readable ballot. So we'll pull these out, any with the note on them that say that they've been transferred, because uh, we wouldn't want to count those votes twice. They have not, oh, but they're, they're but they included. are included in that 2023. Right. Yeah. But, so we want to reduce that number by one because this has been transferred. Oh, into yeah, ballot. we could make this a non-ballot. Make it a non-ballot. Yeah. Okay, so um, Dylan, you can make this a non-ballot. Non-ballot. You want to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't even do that. Yeah. Just go to non-ballot on your uh, radio button. There you go. There's a clear note on this ballot that the votes have been transferred to a separate ballot that was also counted. So that's accounting for one of the additional ballots we counted today. And so we're not going to include the votes on this ballot in the count. Does that make sense to you? 
Jim, are you okay with me going through them? Yes. Before they find it, yeah. So I'm going to go through these already. The audit team, we ended up counting two additional ballots um, over the number that was reported on the official return of vote. We are pretty confident in assuming that those are ballots that were, the votes were transferred onto a tabulator readable ballot, um, but were still included in this count because this bag had five or six, or how many did we pull out? I think eight? Eight, nine on our own that we found. Five. I think eight. It was five plus the three that JP found. And so it's, it's likely that there were additional ones that we might not have caught that got um, counted during the audit. These guys are looking through the images to see if we can find any of the images with that similar note on it that the ballot had been transferred. Also, the clerk noted to Lori when she was dropping the ballots off that she would be, quote, off by one. We're not sure what that referred to exactly, but that could explain that she may have found an additional ballot after the didn't, count that was in the bag. Didn't one of the clerks say that they had an extra ballot in there? She said she was off by one, is okay. all she said to us. So yeah. we think that might be an additional ballot that was found later, too, and included in the bag. So with that said, expecting there to be two additional votes on the audit side, I'll go through the totals, starting with president. Biden had 12, 13. Blankenship had three, Carroll had two, Collins had one, Duncan had two, Hawkins had three, Jorgensen had 19, Kennedy four, LaFontaine nine, McCormick three, Page nine, Siegel one, Gary Swing two, Trump 896, and West 11, six write-ins, one overvote, 24 blank. I know, that's the thing. It's, it's hard to dig in because we know we're off by two ballots anyway, and those are both, both within that two ballot margin, the change that I can see there. So I think I'll just read through these while you guys are looking. And as long as we don't see any that are wider than two, we will assume that that's the issue. Uh, for Rep to Congress, Becker, 139, Barry, 688, Halali, 9, Horn, 15, Orr, 8, Tridell, 14, Welch, 1251, Right ends of two, six overvotes, 77 blank. Six overvotes here too. Those are all right within that one or two ballot margin. Governor, we had Billity with five, DeVos with four, Dickerson seven, Hoyt 46, Peyton 22, Scott 1544, Whitney, 12, Zuckerman, 507, 25 write-ins, two overvotes, 35 blanks. For Lieutenant Governor, Billadu at 27, Corbo, 7, Erickson, 32, Gray, 921, Milne, 1144, write-in, 7, Overvotes nine, blank votes 62. Nine twenty-one. Nine twenty-one. And one one four four, sure. You counted five of them. We did find one more with that marking. So can you un can you roll that back? Yeah, we can roll that one back. Okay. They did find another ballot with the marking that it had been transferred. 
that was one of the ones she penned in, so it didn't even have the little sticker. Those are even harder for us to catch because they're just penned on the back. Worth it. It may be the one that she was talking about that she had an additional, but okay. if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, I'll keep looking. Yep. Do, um, do you, um, you're not going to restart. Nah, nah. Let's do that. Uh, for state treasurer, Brannigan, 847, Erickson, 87, Pierce, 1026, Wright, 107, two right ends. 140 blank. Those are all right, right on pretty much, aside from the ballot. Uh, Secretary of State, Condos 1095, Erickson 58, Page 784, Smith 127, one right in. Two overvotes, 142 blank. Uh, for auditor, Erickson, 305. Hoffer, 1573. 13 write ins, one overvote, 317 blank. For Attorney General, Donovan at 1245, Erickson 84, Page 745, write ins of three, one over vote, 131 blank votes. And for State Senator, Cavacus, 223, Collimore, 883, Corsell, 451, Cox, 611, Hooker, 947, Jennings, 82, Lenches, 34, Shank, 632, Terenzini, 788, Williams, 664, 8 write in, 9 over vote, 1295 blank. And state rep, Jerome, 1228, Shaw, 1386, Solia, 843, 12 write ins, zero over vote, 949 blank. And last but not least, High Bailiff, Bixby, 1377, Humphreys, 385. 28 write ins, 0 over vote, 419 blank. So the results that you just saw on the screen from the audit are all going to change by at least one vote in each race because one ballot will be backed out that we found was marked having been transferred. And they're looking for a second um, as we speak. They don't find another. Right now, yeah. It'd be twelve ten versus her twelve oh nine. One off, which may be the one that Sue was telling us about. Yeah. We have about four hundred and fifty more to run through. Yeah, we'll let it run through. You guys let it run, but I think we can pack these up. Yeah. These are yeah. two thousand ballots, right? <laughs> so you can uncount yep, that we'll, one we'll too. Make that into a non they just said that reviewing the images, they did find another of the ballots with a notation by the clerk and another election official that it had been transferred to a tabulator readable ballot. That means it should have been, should not have been included in the audit scanning um, and brings the numbers in line. And so when you see the official audit results posted on the website, the ballot counts will match and the numbers that I read or that you saw on the screen as a result of the audit will both be slightly different by two ballots. So I'll save another one for you. Two. This is the one. They couldn't back it out. They couldn't back it out.
but it not I had a printed version. And I don't think it was reflected up there right away. So we're looking at the town of Randolph. And as a number of ballots counted, the um, audit today counted 2,637, whereas on the ORV, the total ballots counted was 26, 28, so that's nine less. Um, however, the candidate vote counts are all within the same kind of one or two vote margins that we've seen all day, if not exact. Um, and so we'll see where the discrepancies are as we go through, I would say. And that is going to require some follow-up with the clerk. It appears that there were a, how many, a number of ballots um, hand-counted and added to the totals on the tabulator tape, which might account for the difference in ballot count that we're seeing. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go through the candidate vote totals from the ORV, and we can compare them to the vote totals in the audit. Biden had 1685, Blankenship 2, Carroll 1, Collins 5, Duncan 2, Hawkins 11, Jorgensen 23, Kennedy 4, LaFontaine 8, McCormick 2, Brooke Page 10, Brock Pierce 1, Gary Swing 1, Donald Trump 801, West 17, 13 right ends, 3 overvotes and 39 blank votes. So before you go to the next one, go back up. 39 to 36. So the right end number is about the difference. Um, they had 26. And you had 17. No, 13. 13. 13. But we typically see that those write-ins move up in the candidate totals if they write in a candidate. Stella, that's my daughter's name. Vermin Supreme. Nothing really jumps out. No. no. I'm gonna keep going. We'll go to Rep, to Congress, Becker 58, Barry 694, Halali 32, Horn 58, Orr 9, Tridell 13, Welch 1687, write-ins of 5, 3 overvotes, 69 blank. For Governor, we have Billadu with eight, DeVos with six, Dickerson 13, Hoyt 19, Payton 17, Scott 1866, Whitney 11, Zuckerman 628, right ends of 15, no overvotes, 45 blank. Let me know if anybody wants to stop and look at any. It does seem to be the blanks to me also which are consistently running higher on your side. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, Billadu 31, Corbo 9, Erickson 53, Gray 1237, Milne 1227, six right ends, zero over vote 65 blanks. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, Billadu 31, Corbo 9, Erickson 53. Did I just do that? 1237, I did. 1227, 6, I apologize. State Treasurer, uh, Brannigan 789, Erickson 87, Pierce 1443, Wright 147, Wright ends of 2, 1 over vote, 159 blank.
uh, Secretary of State, Condos 1514, Erickson 65, Page 706, Smith 197, uh, zero write-ins, zero overvote, 146 blanks. 11 additional blanks, right? That's what I'm seeing too. Auditor, Chris Erickson, 364. Hofford, 1918. Write-ins of 10, no overvotes, 336 blanks. Yep. Yeah. Those are what I'm what I'm curious about too. You can I think there's something else I want to look at. I mean these are all these are just these blank parts. So we may have had some just blank unvoted ballots mixed in with the voted ballots in her bag. Yeah. There's the circles. And that's the circling. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving through. Almost done. Attorney General Donovan, 1640. Erickson, 105. Page 706. Six write ins, zero overvotes, 171 blanks. State Senator Huff, 1109. McDonald, 1390. Five write ins. One overvote, 123 blank. State state rep, Deering 223, Hooper 1594, Reed 550, Roach 459, Russell 708, Sackowitz 1002, six right ends, two overvotes, 712 blanks. And high bail if you have Contois with 2,044. 30 write-ins, three overvotes, 500, 551 blank. In the context of removal, more than one of those blanks seems to be uh, more. Even more. Yeah. The actual candidate differences are not. Nope. Yep, and that's to me that is most likely that we may have just had some blank ballots uh, mixed in the bag along with the voted ballots. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the results from the town of Pownal. Thought we were still in Randolph. Um, on election night, on the official return of vote, the clerk reported 1,792 ballots counted. Uh, today we counted 1,793, so that's that's close. Um, we, there's a possibility that a ballot from the test deck used to test the tabulator ended up with the voted ballots. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and uh, compare the results. <clears throat> So in the president's race, Biden has 892, Blankenship 2, Carroll 2, Collins 1, Duncan 2, Hawkins 5, Jorgensen 21, Kennedy 2, Kopit K 1, LaFontaine 7, McCormick 2, Page 2, 
Scalf one, Siegel one, Trump eight thirty one, West five, one right in, six over votes, eight blank. Very close across the board. You want to take a look at Trump's just, just for fun? The least confident Trump. Because you had one additional. Just curious. There is a couple very light ones. A couple light. This X, I have a feeling your sister probably did catch that type of thing. Yeah. The lighter marks. Yeah. And we did have two. You counted. No, we counted more blank. Three right in. You want to look at the right ins too? I'm just curious. They do, and she had Leonard. So they missed the two right ins somehow. Okay. Let's keep going. Rep to Congress. Uh, Becker had 89. Barry, 658. Halali, 4. Horn, 32. Orr, 16. Trudell, 4. Welch, 902. One right in, five over votes, 81 blank. Say those light marks away. Yep. Which may carry on throughout. It might. Uh, Governor Billadu, seven. DeVos, seven. Dickerson, seven. Hoyt, 208. Peyton, 22. Scott, 999. Whitney, 32. Zuckerman, 457. Three right ends. Two over votes. 48 blank. You had five. Yeah, and that's again where where you guys had two more than us. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor. Uh, Billadu fifty five. Corbo nine. Erickson forty two. Gray 766, Scott Milne 828, four right ends, two over votes, 86 blank. So we wrote in Kevin. Let's go to Treasurer. Uh, Brannigan 733. Erickson 60, Pierce 762, right 111, two right ends, one over vote, 123 blank. It's those two again. I'm Brannigan, I'm sure. Uh, Secretary of State. Condo 790, Erickson 52, Page 707, Smith 133, uh, zero right ends, three over votes, 107 blank. So let's look at Auditor. Erickson 324, Hoffer 1129, five right ends. Two overvotes, 332 blank. And Attorney General Donovan, 837, Erickson, 93, Page, 744, zero right in, one overvote, 117 blank. State Senator, we had Campion, 
704, Hall 422, Hansen 570, Hoyt 264, Sears 838, three write ins, one overvote, 782 blank. State rep, you looking at them? What are you looking at? I was just it's the light ones again. It's a good consistent pattern there. Uh, State Rep Brownell had 1190. Uh, 246 write ins. Sheesh. Zero overvotes and 356 blank votes. High Bailiff, uh, Frederick Gilbar, 1412, 16 write in votes, zero over votes, and 364 blank votes. And that's it. Very good job to the town of Townal. And that gives me a chance while we wait for the Warren ballots. I just want to make the comment that I, for those watching and those here, as we've gone through these, um, as the director of elections, I am very satisfied and comfortable with the deviation that we've seen between the ORVs um, and the audit. For the vast majority of these races, we're confirming the vote counts on election night. Um, and I think it's indicative of the accuracy of the tabulators and the election officials who are uh, reporting the results. So for president, I have Biden with 1,039, Collins with one, Duncan with one, Hawkins with three, Jorgensen with 17, LaFontaine with one, Page with two, Swing with two, Trump with 179, and West with four, 15 write-ins. And six blanks. Between what two? So Biden, Biden was in red. 1039. 1039, that's three short. And 179 versus 176 is three short, too. Which would be six. Uh, for Beck, uh, rep to Congress, Becker at 14. Barry 180, Halali 14, Horn 19, Orr 4, Trudell 4, Welch 981, write-ins of 2, 3 overvotes, 49 blank, going to be variable though. But there were two overvotes there as well that are present. Yep. Governor, we have Billadu with one, DeVos with three, Dickerson with five, Hoyt with 16, excuse me, Hoyt with one, Peyton with 16, Scott with 761, Whitney with four, Zuckerman with 458, one right in. 20 overvote, zero blank. Lieutenant Governor, Billadu at 12, Corbo 8, Erickson 21, Gray 8, 12, Milne 371, no write ins, no overvote, 46 blanks. 
State Treasurer, Brannigan, 227, Erickson, 50, Pierce, 833, Wright, 54, no write-ins, no overvotes, 106 blank. Uh, Secretary of State, Condos, 866, Erickson, 38, Page, 206, Smith, 80, two write-ins, zero overvotes, 78 blanks. Auditor, Erickson at 168, Hoffer 902, six write-ins, no overvotes, 194 blanks. Attorney General Donovan at 929, Erickson 54, page 189, one write-in, 97 blanks, no overvotes. State Senate, we had Alger with 213, Cummings with 857, Kirchlick with 593, Polina with 718, Tomasi with 213, Tucker with 189, Valorand with 103, six write-ins, no overvotes, 918 blanks. State Rep. Uh, Dolan, 964, Grad, 892, 48 write-ins, eight overvotes and 628 blanks. And for High Bailiff, uh, Poulin, 313, Skinder, 760, nine total write-ins, zero overvotes, 188 blanks. Five is the biggest delta on any of those. If you had 1263, we were looking for 1269. That's six. It's only six vote, six ballot difference that we were looking for. So that I would expect them to be around within five. I will follow up with the Warren clerk about any idea about under under counting uh, the low number of ballots that we found today from the ballot bag. My God, sorry. I'm looking at the 48 write-ins in the rep race. Secretary Condos is a good example of why we're trying to get them to not have to report all those names. Um, that concludes the audit for the 2020 general election. Uh, if anybody out there on the live stream has any questions, please feel free to follow up with me, my office. Um, otherwise, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And I don't know if Jim wants to say anything, but otherwise, thanks. Thanks again. So I think the, the, the important takeaway from this is that we have uh, a, a simple, safe, and secure elections process. We follow the rules. Our clerks follow the rules. And uh, we are fortunate to have um, hardworking town clerks, hardworking election staff, uh, and we're thankful for our voters for turning out this past year and setting a new record uh, for voter turnout. We are now uh, in the top 10 for voter turnout in the country, uh, and we're very excited about that. Thanks.